Alright, so here we are today with Pingai OS. Now, Pingai OS came out about a day ago from when I did this video, and so, of course, it is based on the recent Ubuntu 11.04 release, but of course, it is still sticking with GNOME uh, 2.3.2. Now, what is Pingai OS? What is the purpose of it? Basically, as most of you would know, it is supposed to be an out-of-the-box, suit every need that you possibly have type operating system. So, it's got everything and the cat's pajamas in this particular release. Now, they have done a great job of filling nearly every need that any user has straight out of the box, and in my case that's just the same. Uh, there is practically nothing that I lack. Uh, after about five minutes of tweaking, I'm ready to do my normal work and my normal uh, everyday computing tasks with no trouble at all, really. Uh, my only complaint is maybe installing Chromium by default, but I'm going to get to that a bit later. So first of all, look and feel as always. Uh, Ping iOS just uses the best themes available as far as look and feel is concerned. They bu they bundle a bunch in their distribution. We've got all of the Equinox themes, all the Fanza icon sets. We've got uh, the Radiance, uh, the Equinox Radiant theme. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few elementary themes. We've got, of course, the Ping iOS custom theme, which is by default. We've also got elementary, which is what everybody is, would expect to be elementary. And we also have a nice Soothe one here, which uh, which sports all of the uh, Fenza uh, Cupertino icon set. So much like, um, uh, I guess they're kind of Mac OS X inspired. But this is a very nice theme as well. Um, not much more I can say here. It's a fantastic looking distribution as far as looks are concerned. There's nothing that you can really complain about. So we're going to go back to the default theme just for continuity's sake. And uh, as far as backgrounds are concerned, I haven't gotten any backgrounds uh, apart from the uh, the yeah well the standard Ping iOS uh, background. But I imagine there might be more coming through the updates. I'm not entirely sure. But at this point, that's all there is. So I've just got my own little black and white wallpaper here. Uh, secondly, you're going to see that, of course, as always, we have the two docks and we have uh, Conky on the side here. Now, an interesting note about Conky is that they have actually uh, included uh, a Conky application to help you manage uh, such a tool, which is quite nice, uh, as uh, Conky has always been a bit uh, troublesome in the past. Now, also they do have uh, more options uh, since the release went final. I'm only running the, the RC2 at this stage. I haven't finished downloading the uh, final release. But there are a few changes in this Conky config app that you can um, change the, the look of it a little bit more. So you can see here that we've just got some very simple options here that if uh, Conky is giving you trouble, you can do it through a handy little GUI, which is very helpful. Now, one of the biggest things that is uh, one of the pluses of Ping iOS is that it ha it bundles all of the applications that you would use slash need slash maybe might want to use one day applications in by default that you really don't have to go looking for much else. Um, for a 1.5 gig download, you really can't go wrong. You've got Cover Glubus, you've got um, you've got uh, Preview, you've got Glubus Preview. You can see down here that Rhythm Box is uh, the Rhythm Box controls can be uh, run from down here. And uh, honestly, there's really nothing that you're lacking. The idea behind Ping iOS is that it needs to provide an out of the box experience for any of those who are just wanting to look into Linux. Uh, as as a as an alternative to uh, to what they've been used to in the past, so it it presents a much more comprehensive uh, it presents a much more comprehensive application selection than what um, than what uh, something like uh, Linux Mint does. Um, honestly, there's really not much more I can say about it. In all honesty, they they bundle best of the breed applications, the best applications that Linux has to offer they put into this distro and even ones that are harder to install like uh, like Handbrake for example, the LX, um, the LX Blu-ray player, the Linux Blu-ray player uh, we've got DVD here for your DVD authoring we've got uh, digital TV control, GTK pod for um, iPod management We've got OpenShot, we've got XBMC Media Center which uh, again is a wonderful application um, one thing that I definitely will mention is that uh, Ping iOS is a real memory hog. So what I mean by real memory hog is uh, it needs it needs a lot of RAM and it needs a lot of CPU to conquer all the tasks that you give it. Because out of the box, it does use up on a 64-bit edition. It does use up about 700 meg of RAM. So definitely not for the 
uh, not for the faint of heart as far as uh, machines are concerned. Now uh, here we're having a look at XBMC. XBMC is a wonderful uh, media centre. I'm glad they've actually included that because quite honestly that was the only one that they hadn't quite conquered yet. So you can get, of course, uh, everybody knows what XBMC looks like. Uh, you've got uh, your pictures and you've got your videos, music, etc, etc, and you can file through those uh, to your heart's content and use it as your uh, main desktop if you're plugged it in in a lounge room. So we'll exit that for the time being. And uh, you can see here I've got open uh, VLC media player, I've got open shot open as well. Uh, open shot we are running at version 1.30 which is uh, pretty much the latest and greatest. You've got transitions and effects galore. This is really the iMovie uh, substitute for Linux and it's come a long long way. Fantastic application. Uh, we've got LibreOffice of course. Uh, as, as you would do now. Apparently since the RC they have uh, improved this theme a bit because it does look a little bit ugly but the, yes they have fixed that and we've also got Pinter installed instead of GIMP. The basic idea behind Pinter is that uh, it's a bit more easy to use than what, um, than what GIMP is. It's, it's a bit more like paint.net from Windows so that's a nice application inclusion as well. Um, yep, VLC and uh, you can, uh, as you've already noticed, we've got the Linux Mint menu here, which is probably one of the most effective menus under GNOME. We've got a lot of tweaking tools here. We've got um, we've got uh, VirtualBox 4. We've got a phone manager, the Ubuntu software center, Ubuntu Tweak, Unet boot in, which has been replaced by a USB uh, writing program that uh, yeah that has been replaced since the RC2. So this will not be included by default. They have put in a better tool for the job, which is great to see. Um, bleach bit is still there. Be careful with that one. You don't want to um, mess things up unnecessarily. Uh, we've got Wine installed. We've got Wine Tricks pre-installed. We've got Play on Linux. We've got DJL, which is your game manager. They've really thrown the kitchen sink in this release, and quite honestly, there is nothing that you can't do with this distribution out of the box. Uh, we've even got things like Lightscribe. We've got the LRF viewer, which I believe is an ebook reader. I'm not entirely sure. I could be way off with the fairies. But yes, it does look like it's an ebook reader for uh, the Sony ebook reader devices. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Lightscribe, LibreOffice Draw, Disk Wrapper, and uh, Simple Scan, Shotwell, and Rapid Photo Downloader. So those are great. Shotwell, I'm pretty sure, is running at the latest version as well. So now it's going to import all of the photos in my home folder, and yes, we are at 0.9.3. Now, the other interesting thing to note about uh, Ping iOS is they bundle in a lot of software sources, a lot of additional PPAs. So if we go into the software sources section, you can see, um, and look at all these. We've got Canonical Partners, Independent, Linux Mint, Debian that you can enable. We've got, uh, we've got Pysad, I think. I'm not exactly sure what that's for, so I'll have to check. We've got Linux Mint 11, we've got the Medibuntu, we've got uh, the Vineyard Testing, XBMC, we've got uh, Miserware, which wasn't quite working, we've got Synapse, uh, we've got Panthera Cover Chooser, we've got Notify OSD, we've got PPAs for Dropbox, we've got PPAs for Floz, which I don't know what that is, we've got Ubuntu Tweak, we've got Conky, we've got Google, we've got uh, Handbrake, we've got Nautilus Elementary, we've got uh, Ubuntu Wine, we've got Lots and lots of stuff. Get Deb, Java, you name it. They absolutely throw the kitchen sink as far as PPAs are concerned. So you're always going to be up to date with all of these weird and wonderful applications that don't get a whole lot of publicity. Great to see. No questions asked. Uh, we've also got, of course, Gnome Do installed by default as well, uh, which I'm pretty sure you can install Synapse as those uh, as those PPAs were there. But Gnome Do suits, suits the purpose just fine, and there's no real comments there. Uh, as far as trimming this distribution down, uh, usually I start out by knocking off a few of these panel items as they can uh, consume a fair bit of RAM. Uh, out of the box, I had Dropbox installed and up and running. That was no worries. Uh, this one can uh, this one can take up a bit of room. That's pasty. That's a um, clipboard manager. You've got your network manager and your and your uh, and your sound indicators. So that's no worries there at all. You can handle your playlists and your sound controls right here from the menu, which is cool. Um, we've also got, of course, the me menu over here and the messaging menu here, which will tie into Skype. And Skype is also pre-installed by default. So honestly, there is nothing that this operating system can't do. Um, 
I don't really have much more to say about it. It's exhausting just going through this uh, operating system and seeing what it has to offer. Honestly, this is the ultimate out-of-the-box distribution. If you want something that's just set up, ready to go from the minute you install it, uh, you're well and truly sorted. You've got Deja Dupe for your backups, which is a wonderful application. It will be installed by default on uh, Ubuntu 11.10, so that is a good inclusion to have. Um, oh, there's really not much more I can say. It's it's a it's quite a well-performing distribution. Boot time is obviously a little bit slower because of all the stuff they have installed. But in all honesty, that's what you're asking for when you download Ping iOS. You are asking for a complete user experience. It lacks nothing. You can do pretty much anything you want, including installing Windows games, Windows software, additional drivers, language support. It's all there included for you. Uh, Dropbox, Skype, um, OpenShop Video Editor, LibreOffice. It's all there. It's all ready, accessible, and set up, ready to go. There is almost minimal tweaking involved. Practically, all I did here was change the wallpaper and set up my proxy servers, and that was about it, and I was ready to roll. So definitely worth checking out. In my opinion, it's more for uh, it's more for larger screens. On a small screen, this can get quite cluttered pretty quickly. As you can see, we've got Conky and we've got the docs and we've got a rather um, and we've got a rather, rather busy panel up here. So I would recommend using this on a larger screen. Um, yeah, I, I would say this is the ultimate desktop um, operating system. Not so good for a laptop as it is a bit of a CPU hog, bit of a memory hog. But for a 17 inch screen on a laptop it's okay, but I think anything smaller than that and you might be a bit pressed for space. Having said that, fantastic release, well done on the Ping iOS team slash developer. And I think it's a fantastic release, definitely, um, definitely geared towards new users who don't want to have to do anything to their system. They'll stay up to date with the best of the breed applications, uh, everything you could need out of the box. And that is Ping iOS.